Hi everybody, it's Kevin Ma again, and in this video we're going to look at something that's both free, polyphonic, MPE compatible, and it works great with all of Keith McMillan's MPE controllers. I'm talking about VCV Rack. Let's turn on the lights, we'll get started, and then I'll start with a quick setup guide. First we'll start with the setup guide. In a way we'll be setting up and changing our configuration a lot, looking at different setups and different modules to connect. I'll stick to only using free modules for this demonstration. And I think just in case anybody's new or uh, wants an intro to modular VCV, let's uh, start from scratch. There is a basic setup when you create a new project, so we can use this one to test. And maybe this will serve to just deal with the audio configuration. So you can see I'm outputting to my sound card from this module here. And over on this module, we're inputting from our controller. So I want to change that to core MIDI and we'll pick the keyboard there. Immediately, we should have sound. Maybe one of the first things we'll do is browse and add some other devices to this basic setup that we have here. And we'll add and connect some stuff in the audio path, which is always a good place to start. I think adding a mixer before the interface, you can see as I disconnect that, we've lost our sound. And I'll add a mixer, just typing in the search mixer. Uh, and we'll start with a simple mixer and maybe a reverb to add some effects to our synth there. Before, the filter was the last part of the output. So I'll just take another cable from there go into the mixer channel one and we'll go out of the mixer into our audio output so we're in stereo let's bring in a reverb and i'll connect the input of the reverb to the effect send if i want to be tidy with my cables you can see how i can right click and choose a color scheme Maybe I'll stick to yellow for this connection here. And it looks like I'm using the very first send. Probably correlates to this row of green knobs here. Let's disconnect all our cables and we'll build a patch from scratch. We'll start with a basic monophonic synth. I'll add some more modules. We'll wire this all up. And then we'll have to take a look at achieving polyphony and even MPE. I think I'll clear some of the modules used in the default and make some space so we can add some other modules. Starting with audible instruments, let's get the macro oscillator. We have both uh, macro oscillator one and two. Lots of other brands you might recognize from the modular community are adding and creating great devices, such as Bifaco. We'll try out one of their oscillators there. Let's try a classic VCO from Surge XT. So I'm going to work backwards. We already had this set up, so we'll do this again. Hook up our reverb and our mixer to the master output module. And I'll bring this volume down until we're set up. Reason why is these oscillators always put out sound. So until we control them and set up our envelopes and VCA, uh, we'll avoid having constant noise. Over on my MIDI side, you can see I have core MIDI and keyboard already set up from before. Let's take the voltage to octave output. We'll use a green cable and connect active on all of our oscillators. So maybe first I'll take the outputs of these oscillators and wire them into this VCA mix, which we'll output there into channel one. I'm working backwards in this case, so we'll stick with that. Out of this mixer is going into channel one of that mixer and into the input ports. 
I'll pick a saw wave. Then we'll take the output there. And we'll do another saw tooth there. And there's the last input there connected. So that we can trigger this and get some envelope key down, we'll use an ADSR. And we'll take the envelope out of there into the CV, controlling all four. My second envelope I'm going to dedicate to the filter. So we'll go right off the bat into the cutoff of that filter. So that we can trigger these envelopes, we'll take the gate signal, which is going to be the note on from the keyboard, and we'll patch that into the gate on both of our envelopes. Now with a key press, you should see the signal leave the gate and reach the envelope stage, which you can also trigger manually if you want with your mouse. You can also see the LED activity as you trigger one of these envelopes or press a note and trace the signals to where they might go. Hovering over, you can see the values represented in voltage as the changes occur. A value of 10 volts represents the note on from the gate, and also hovering over it shows where the gate output is connected to. So as you can see, the first part of our synth is already connected. We have an envelope, and a filter envelope. To work, we might want to go out of our mixer into the filter first, and then out of the filter back into the input. Let's hook up our pitch, which would come from this voltage to octave output right here. We have four oscillators to connect them to. So we just need to find that corresponding input on our oscillators and connect it. I'll leave one disconnected so you can see how three of them will track. But that last one won't until we connect it. Immediately, we can start detuning these oscillators. It's nifty with a double click, you can just reset it. Try holding command for a fine tuned range. All of these oscillators are connected into this VCA mixer before they reach the filter, so I can balance them and focus in on one if I choose. And in the case of the audible macro oscillator, there are several different modes for pitch sounds on the left. and a source of noise, percussion-based sounds on the right. I'm going to focus in on oscillator 3 and 4. both have some unique features. Surge's XTVCO actually has the ability of doing several voices at once. So while we're working with a monophonic sound, let's quickly input a slew limiter and we'll use this to achieve portamento. So in that case, I want the voltage to octave to reach the slew limiter first. Let's just move all these cables here to the output later and the input will come from the original destination. And 
And what I really like about setting up your own portamento like this It's not just the ability of switching between linear and exponential and uh, logarithmic slopes or shapes, is that you have control over the rise and the fall time. So if I was to remove the rise time, you can see that I can control the uh, portamento so it only slides down and never slides up, or the reverse of that. Let's open them for filter. I'm going to undo to the point before we had the slew limiter up, and we'll use that configuration there to achieve polyphony. Starting with just the classic VCO. And to achieve that, we're going to right click on the MIDI CV module. There's a lot of hidden features behind some of these right click menus, different settings. I'll turn on the output saturation for our plate reverb. Sometimes there's different skins, so I can choose the coloring of it or hidden functions and preset selection. But the right click menu of your MIDI to CV module is pretty important because there you can set things like your pitch bend range, how many channels of polyphony, and what sort of polyphony you're going to use. Keep in mind in the world of Eurorack to achieve polyphony it might require special modules, several cables, and CV and gate is by design monophonic. If we were to switch to polyphony by selecting say eight channels here you're going to notice the representation in cables get larger. Here you can see the difference of some mono cables versus some poly cables and when I hover over a poly cable you see the eight different controls there. So by setting polyphony, we should have multiple channels. And I also want to pipe out into our scope just so we can see the different channels coming in there versus mono. Let's gain this a bit. Versus poly. So multiple signals in short. What about things like MPE messages? I'm going to show you my settings for my keyboard. I'm using the web editor and in this case I have MPE on with eight member channels and a tilt bend range of 12 steps as well as for the pad. For that reason I've selected nine channels for my channel rotation and that will cover our pitch bend or global message of foot pedal or pitch bend on channel 1 and our channel rotation being channel 2 to 9. Let's take a look at the aftertouch which will output pressure. Moving over to pitch wheel. We'll see the same thing for our tilt. Here's an interesting thing that's worth mentioning. Even though we have a pitch bend range for the tilt, the tilt message still comes out the pitch wheel. So in a setting like this, with especially with the keyboard, when we're sending bend per tilt, we can control the tilt, and if we want it on the note, we can set our range there. So I'll try an octave. And you can see the pitch bend range is going to channel one, so it's not affecting the certain, the specific note. If I wanted a patch where the tilt was doing something different, I can turn that off. I still have that global message there. 
that could be something interesting to dial in if I wanted like um, a global filter affecting all voices. I'll tap into the sustain of this filter, which will affect its position after the decay portion. I hope that gives some examples of some of the expressiveness we can attain. Thank you. 